Listen to this episode if your social media has been struggling to get some traction lately and you just don't quite know what to do. In this episode, we are going to be diving into what I would do as a business growth specialist in if my social media just wasn't working for me right now as a product-based business owner. Hello, welcome to the Small Business Growth Podcast. I'm your host, Madison Page, and I am a business growth specialist that specializes in helping people build businesses on social media by building a ride or die community around their brand. I have people every day come to me saying, you know, my social media isn't working. I'm putting so much time into it. Why is my content not getting traction? I'm just kind of winging it and I don't really know what to do. Today, we're going to take three major steps in order to identify what's going on and to fix the problem on your own social media and to find what that next step is. Here we teach in a fun conversational type of way where I kind of like to say it's sipping coffee with a biz bestie. It's you and I having a conversation and it's a very casual, genuine way of learning. If you would rather watch face-to-face and sip your coffee with me, you can click the link in the show notes and actually watch it uh, over on YouTube at the Small Business Growth Podcast there as well. And we can actually chat face-to-face. So let's dive in to the first major step here that if your social is just not really working, what I do with my clients and what I would do with my business as well. First things first, I would take it back to the foundations, the three major pieces of foundational things that we need to know are your ideal customer, your branding, and your messaging. Do you have these three things set really, really solid? Businesses that see results on social media versus businesses that are really struggling oftentimes have clarity on these three things before they're really even creating content or just before they're creating that content. They know who they're speaking to, what they want their brand to be, and what that major messaging piece is for their brand. What makes you different? What makes you stand out? And what is your major piece that you are going to be creating messaging around in your business? And so if you don't have these three pieces, these are the first three things that I would really look at identifying. When I work with a client one-on-one, I always ask ask these three things at our first call. You know, who are you selling to? What makes your business different? And what type of brand are you really trying to build here? Do you want it to be fun? Do you want it to be playful? Do you want it to be serious, professional, educational? What does that adjective kind of look like for your brand? ideal customer, branding, and messaging. We need to have these three things working really seamlessly together in order for us to know that your strategy is solid enough and that you're going to actually talk to people. Social media and what it's all about is really just catching people at the moment of watching your content and getting them to want to consume more. And so if you don't know who you're trying to attract, if you don't know who you're trying to speak to, if you don't know what kind of visuals your ideal customer would like or what makes your business so incredible or makes it so different than everybody, makes it so unique, how are you supposed to really call in people and magnetize people to you? People are on social media either to be inspired, entertained, educated, or just like learn information or they're there to disassociate. So your content needs to be strong enough to get people to want to see it stick around and say, ooh, okay, I'm going to connect with this person. And at how you do that is very much so at the foundations. Because I use this example a lot. If I were to ask you to write a speech, one of your first questions would be, okay, who am I speaking to? And like, what is my speech gonna be on? If you don't know the answer to those, it's a really hard task to give. And if somebody told you, okay, you're gonna write a speech on confidence, and whether you are speaking to kindergartners or teachers or veterans, What you are going to say is going to be very different. How you are going to relate to them, how you are going to keep them engaged is very different. So if you're looking at social media, social media has to be very similar to that. Social media, you are trying to keep people engaged and you need to know what they want to see, who you're speaking to, and what messaging you are choosing is the main point of your brand. So first step, if your social media isn't working, is we always go back and we look at the foundations. Are you lacking clarity anywhere? Because anywhere that you lack clarity, your audience feels that kind of disorganization tenfold. Like if you don't know yourself what your messaging is or what your major purpose is here or who you're speaking to, the people in your audience absolutely have no idea whether your brand is for them or not. That is a major focus. Anything that you are lacking clarity on, your audience lacks clarity on it tenfold. All right, that is a major piece that we have to look at here. 
Next, after we look at your foundations, I want to do some research on your, in your industry. What content is working for other people? Like if you're content and you're out there and you're posting the dang thing, I want to know right now, okay, it might not be working for you right now, but let's look at what's working for other people in your industry or just like even in the product space in general. What's working for them? What are some unique ideas that you can do differently than them? Because it's not just what's working for other people in my industry and let me do that too. Really, it's the opposite. What's working for them? What can we learn from it? What information are they speaking about? And then how can we package that differently to let us stand out from other people? Because at the foundations of your brand, as we've already talked about, you should be able to differentiate differentiate yourself so much on those three things, your branding, your ideal customer, and your messaging and your differentiator. Those are the three foundational trifecta pieces in order to stand out on socials. If you want a free training on that, I actually have one. I'll put it in the show notes. You can download it there, Standout Socials. It's completely free. You can kind of learn what those three things are and how they relate to social media a little bit more. I have a free training on that. You can uh, download that in the show notes. But those three things really should set you apart. But now we want to actually set ourselves apart in a content space as well. If everybody else in, in your space is talking about one thing, Maybe we want to try to do something different. We need to see what's working for these people and what gaps you can fill in that market because if you're just creating trendy content and creating content that everybody else is doing, you're actually going to just blend into everybody else in your industry. That's why industries feel so saturated is because so many people, okay, one person does it, all of these other people start to do it, and then they're like, oh, like it worked for this first person. It no longer works. And now everybody is doing it. And now it doesn't stand out. You just feel like you're blending into everybody else. So yes, we want to do our research to see what is working for other people. And we want to see what questions people are asking in the comments, what content, what topics that those people are talking about consistently do well, what things people that are shopping for what you are shopping for, what you are selling, what things they're asking. However, We also want to come up with what are some ways that we can package it differently. Can you have a signature series? Can you do something different in reels? Can you up-level your reels? Can you show some more examples? What are the ways that you can take those questions, answer them in a different way than what everybody else is doing? Because we don't just want to blend in. This is something I do with a lot of my clients is when they say, okay, Maddie, I have like, I'm posting this content. It's not working. I say, okay, If something's not working, something's probably broken. So we need to go back and look at it. And we need to look at kind of what other people are doing to to see what consumption is really there. Now, of course, we don't want to just imitate what other people are doing. Too many people are doing that out there. You're not trying to imitate. You're trying to see and actually do market research of what people in your ideal customer actually like to consume. What content is that? What topics do they like to watch? What style of videos do they like to watch? Is it voiceovers? Is it, you know, vlog kind of style? What is that content that they really like to watch for you? And then after that, is we are looking at your strategy. So we've looked at the foundations of your brand. We've made sure those are really solid. We've already done some research to what your ideal customers really want. What are they liking? What consumption habits do they have? And now we're looking at your strategy. Is there variety in it? Are you even following a social media strategy? Do you know what season of business that you're in right now? Are you trying to grow? Are you trying to nurture? Are you trying to sell? What is the purpose of your of Instagram in the buying process? Do you have the right people in front of you? Are you connecting with them? Do you have variety in what you're creating? These are some questions that I immediately am asking myself when I'm scrolling through somebody's social media when they're saying that it's struggling. Is I'm saying, okay, all of your posts kind of look a little similar. Are you even following a strategy? Do you have deeper topics in what you're talking about more than just your product? Are you building a deeper meaning here? All of these things go back to, are, do you actually have a solid social media strategy? And when I ask, do you know what season of business you're in right now? Do you know what stage in the buying cycle your social media is? If you're like Maddie, that is quite literally gibberish, okay? You're like, Maddie, I have no idea what that means. That means nothing to me right now. It probably means you don't have a solid strategy on social. You probably don't have a solid marketing understanding, and that is totally okay. There is nothing wrong with that because we are not born understanding marketing. That is what people like me are for is to help you have these solid marketing, this marketing understanding here. But 
when we look at social media, every piece of content that you create is not created for the exact same purpose of just selling. We are not using marketing just as a, as like a forum to share your products. Your social media really should be looked at as the hub of your community where you can share information and where you can really create connection with these people. So let's look at your strategy. Let's look at your content. Do you have variety? Do you have depth of topics? The average customer is only, or the average business owner is only posting two of seven types of content that are necessary in order to actually see good results on social media. So what that means is, is that you need more variety in what you're doing in order to make it make sense for you. You need more variety in what you're doing to make social media have that traction. Something called like a well-balanced marketing feed is if people are scrolling through and they're bored after two, you're going to lose them. So we need some variety in what you're doing, variety in what you're talking about, and really just in general, how you are marketing your business needs to have some interest in it. It doesn't all have to be fun and playful and all of that, but it does need to have some interest. Your social media content is not all just to make sales. So if you are just using content, your reels, your stories, your posts, everything you're putting out there in order to make sales, the majority of your social media actually is to build community. So if your social media isn't working, you need to also go back and look at your strategy. Are you even following a strategy? Do you know what piece of the puzzle your social media is playing in your sales process and how are you actually cycling through a true calendar. Now I know right now some of you are saying, Maddie, I don't have time for that. Like I'm already posting so much. I can't even imagine posting more that is going to nurture and it's going to grow and having more inside of this puzzle. But it, it, you are already doing the work. You're just doing it like inefficiently, inefficiently, inefficiently. <laughs> You're just doing it where it doesn't really make sense in your sales strategy. And if you nurture better on social media, your sales will actually come sooner. Your sales will actually come better. Your sales will actually start to flow for you. It's not that you need to sell less and that all of a sudden your sales are going to take a dip and that you need to sell elsewhere. You need to sell less so when it does, when you are selling, people are more likely to actually buy. They're more tapped in. And so a lot of times, yes, we want to first start at your foundations. Make sure you have all of the necessary information in the foundations of your brand. So we have to take it back. Look, make sure you know your ideal customer. Make sure you know your branding. Make sure you know your messaging and how you really differentiate. And sometimes we can get kind of comfortable that those are things that we can and we can have clear and we can have clarity on them but we kind of forget to integrate them into our system sometimes. Um, and so we want to make sure that we still do have those really set and that we are still properly using them inside of our marketing. When was the last time you called in your ideal customer in a post? When was the last time you talked about what made your product different? What was, when was the last time you actually got deep and talked about your brand as the brand that it is? And then after we do that, we want to look and see what are other people doing. So we have some sort of knowledge on what is going on in the industry, what is working, what is not what is oversaturated, what are too many people doing, and what elements can we take from what is working and move it over to us. And then we have to audit our strategy. Look at your strategy right now and try to say, okay, has it been a while since you've posted something around X, Y, and Z? Are you forgetting your email? Have you not? Have you only been selling your products? Have you been selling a ton recently? And again, I also want to add something that sometimes the reason social media isn't working can be an external factor. Like take this as a permission slip to understand that June and July, historically, statistically, a slow time for people on social media as well as for e-commerce. Why is because people are outside enjoying life after being cooped up all winter and they're spending their money elsewhere. They're planning for their trips. They're saving for their vacations. They are um, spending money going to the beach instead of sitting on their couch and like just shopping online. And so it's historically a time where online sales are a little bit slower. So understanding there are external factors out there as well. It's not always just an internal thing. We can adapt our internal in order to make everything out, kind of make up for the external factors. However, it doesn't mean that 
everything that that is going wrong is 100% your fault. Sometimes there's just sometimes my clients will launch and they'll be like, Maddie, why did you think this launch didn't do as well? And I'm like, well, you know, it was the 4th of July, like people were busy, or it's Memorial Day, or it was Mother's Day this weekend, people are busy, or, um, you know, something else is going on in the world, like maybe it's that people are distracted, maybe Instagram was down, or whatever it may be. You don't know what external factors within your ideal customer is going on right now to make things a little less like potent. So yes, there's a lot of internal things that we can do and we can always adapt our internal to make up for external. However, there can be some external factors that are coming to play as well. June and July are statistically a lull in businesses. So if you're like, Maddie, what the heck? I felt like I was on a roll. And now for whatever reason, people aren't buying. It seems like it's slowed down. It's kind of normal. And then it picks back up in August and September and October. And then through the holidays and things kind of pick up from there. And then again, like sometimes March can be kind of slow as well as June and July. So we're kind of looking at that from there. So you're coming to me right now, and if you were sitting down across the table from me and you were saying, Maddie, I thought I would had some momentum, but my social media just isn't working. I'm getting so frustrated. I'm doing all of the things. I'm posting all of the time. Really what I would ask you is, let's look at your content. Are you following a strategy? Are you doing things unique? Are you doing things new? Do you have a signature series that you can try to play with? Have you tested different styles of content? And you really kind of have to get gritty with, have you tested? Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at your, your engagement, which content is performing the best out of all of them and how can we capitalize on that? Do you have variety in what you're talking about? And of course, really at the core is we need to understand content strategy. If you're like, Maddie, I have no idea. I do not have a content strategy. My Breakthrough Content Lab course would be the perfect place for you to start. It is a completely comprehensive social media content course. We talk about TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, all of the things, as well as you learn my seven types of content, how to schedule, really just comprehensive from, comprehensive from A to Z. We'll talk about your foundations. We'll talk about how to know what content to post, where to post your content, the variety of content you have to create, the topics you should talk about, um, and just really overall all how to market on social media that actually gets traction. The average student inside of this course sees an increase in sales in just three weeks from implementing this strategy. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll put the link in the show notes. You can check it out. It's called the Breakthrough Content Lab. It is one of my best-selling courses all about social media, and you really get all of my content strategy and everything like that. So if you are looking at all of this and you're saying, okay, Maddie, how do I know? Like, I really don't know enough about business in order to do it. My main question for you is, do you have a strategy? Do you know what you're doing? Do you know the why behind the actions that you're taking on social? And if your answer is no, that should be your first priority is learning some of that and really figuring that out. And when I was starting, when I had my blog way back when I, when I was like OG influencer days before influencing was really a thing, we were more like bloggers. When I go back and I look at that, when like nobody was buying my products from my blog, I'm like, what the heck? I have this community. People love me, but like nobody is buying. I go back and I remember being like, why the heck is this not happening? And once I really got serious around learning consumer behavior, learning sales psychology, and really figuring it out and going all in on like being authentically me, being more unique, creating content that not everybody was just creating all of the time, it actually started to work better for me. Because if you're just doing everything that everybody else is doing, you're just going to blend in with the noise. If you're just following trends, you're just blending in with every other trend out there. I could, I know that if I started posting content that was like, here is a trending audio for your small business to go viral. I know I would, I could go viral. I know content I could post tomorrow that could make my profile go viral because I've tested it. But I don't post that content because that is not the brand. That is not what I want to have. It is not what I want to teach. I don't want to teach you how to use trending audios. I want to teach you real and raw science. And so you have to create content that feels good for you, that feels good for the community you want to build. And understanding that content that everybody else is creating might not actually sit right with you. And that's okay. We don't want to follow every trend just because it's working for other people. What can you do that's different? How can you create content that makes sense for you. 
All right, I hope that this was helpful. I'm wishing you so much luck on your social media journey. If you are interested in learning the sales strategy and honestly, a lot of the how and the what and the why behind everything I just talked about, how to do these things, where to go, how to plan it, what to do, what to post, answering all of these questions. Are you following a strategy? What season of business you're in? What like stage of the buying cycle, all of that is inside of my course, The Breakthrough Content Lab. You can click the link below um, and you can check out some details there. That is one of my best-selling courses. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this was so helpful for you. If you found it helpful or you know somebody out there that's also struggling with social media, share this episode over to them so you guys can chat about it and you can say, hey, listen to this. Tell me your ideas. What do you think? And a lot of times when we put two heads together, it can be easier to have that conversation with your nice little biz bestie or your friend or your mom or saying, hey, I just need somebody to talk to about it. Send it to somebody and have this conversation with them. Make sure that you're doing that. We put out new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. I am so happy that you are here. If you have any questions, come on over to Instagram at this is Madison Page, and I would love to chat with you there. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you very soon. I love you. I'm rooting for you, and I'm in your corner always.